And welcome to Forum 360 on Fusion Channel PBS TV, Western Reserve Public Media. We are also on the Hudson Community TV and the Rubber City radio stations in Akron. And I'm Bill Steven Saus, your host, where we always present on Forum 360 a topic with a global outlook and a local view. And today, our global outlook is changes in urban areas, in cities, and in the city of Akron, which is one of the largest uh, cities in our Northeast Ohio area. And we're going to focus in on communities there. We're going to uh, involve ourselves with a community that's kind of dear to me, uh, having my grandparents uh, move there from Stark County in the 1930s. Uh, and that is the uh, village of Kenmore when it was in the 1920s and Kenmore is now, uh, since 1929, a part of Akron. The city of Akron, uh, one of the, the rubber city, as uh, we have rubber city radio stations, uh, we're still considered the rubber city, even though many of uh, our rubber companies have moved out of town uh, as far as their manufacturing. Today, we are fortunate to have uh, a Kenmore native. Uh, she grew up in Kenmore, Mrs. Tina Broad Boys. Tina, have, uh, uh, you ever experienced a time when um, you've seen a city change so much? No, and, and what's wonderful about that is there's so much opportunity right now in the city of Akron, particularly in the neighborhoods. Um, at his recent State of the City address, Dan Horgan mentioned um, a, a, some new initiatives to bring um, monies and energy back into the neighborhoods, particularly neighborhood business districts. So that's something that's near and dear to my heart and my work with Kenmore Neighborhood Alliance. So okay, so yeah. you're the executive director of Kenmore Neighborhood Alliance. Correct. And just to familiarize uh, people, they probably drive through Kenmore more often. As a matter of fact, uh, as I mentioned, my grandparents uh, lived on 21st Street, which is now was taken by the Kenmore leg of the 277-76 I-76 expressway system. And uh, so I remember uh, leaving Kenmore with them, moving uh, out, uh, out of town, uh, finding other places uh, with my parents to live. But uh, Kenmore still has that major um, major boulevard called Kenmore Boulevard. And uh, that's uh, near and dear to me. And if you look at the history of Kenmore Boulevard, it's it, uh, wide and beautiful. As I was growing up and visiting the area as a youngster um, in the uh, 50s and 1960s, uh, there was always uh, buses, uh, even a train at one time. Uh, uh, they had the uh, major bus line. The bus barn was at the end of Kenmore, the yep. metro bus system, yes. which is uh, which was on the uh, east side of the boulevard. And it's still there. It's still there. Yeah. All right. Now, let's say uh, since Kenmore became a city uh, in 19, well, in uh, part of the city of Akron and uh, no longer was a village, uh, effective 1929, 1930, uh, what were some of the larger businesses that you recall uh, flourishing in Kenmore? Some of the businesses that made Kenmore uh, what it is, what yeah. it identified with. So I grew up in the 70s and 80s in Kenmore, so some of those businesses had moved on by the time you know I, I was young, but uh, Diamond Crystal Salt, there's an area just east of Kenmore Bowl. Manchester or, Road. I, yes, just east of Manchester Road. Um, we have salt mines under Kenmore. So that has been an area of activity since, I mean, well before even, you know, my parents right. were in the area. And that still thrives today. I, I'm on planning commission for the city of Akron, and we just approved um, Cargill Salt um, doing some work underground there That's to excellent. maintain their business there. So it's funny, you know, I, I, I'm very very much in the green and recycle reuse kind of movement, but there's something about seeing those stacks blowing smoke that kind of um, communicates life and activity there that I, I, it's nice to see still. Now you were you were a Kenmore Cardinal. You uh, played sports there as yes, a youngster. Yes, I did. Um, and uh, there's a lot of pride in the Kenmore community. Um, you know, they've had some notable figures. Even Mayor Plasquelic was a uh, football player at Kenmore and, uh, you know, was a star uh, uh, football player and so forth. Uh, former Mayor Plasquelic. And uh, so you got to see, your parents got to work with some of the uh, finest folks in Kenmore. Uh, what do you think we need as far as the Kenmore Neighborhood Alliance uh, 
we are getting funding, especially from the Knight Foundation. Yes. So what are some of the uh, uh, things that goals that you uh, working with the Knight Foundation, the grant you received. Could you tell us a little bit about that, Tina? Sure. Well, um, just to back up a little bit, um, that funding grew out of an initiative called Better Block. Okay. And there have been three Better Blocks in the city of Akron, the first in North Hill, the second in the Middlebury area, and then the third in Kenmore, um, September 2017 over Labor Day weekend. We had 3,000 people down on Kenmore Boulevard on a Friday night to hear music, to eat some really good food, to enjoy some pop-up retailers, but also to enjoy the existing retailers on Kenmore Boulevard. We are a community rich with musical history. Right. We have an internationally known guitar luthier, Lay's Guitar, frequented by Joe Walsh. Right. Um, right. In fact, um, Jimmy Page's number one on Led Zeppelin IV was a modified Gibson uh, created or modified for Joe Walsh that somehow got in his hand. So um, there are famous people that have their instruments shipped into this guitar place all the time. And our neighborhood doesn't even, a lot of them don't even realize. We've got some other guitar businesses on the boulevard, but we have five recording studios there as well. Well, so there is a there's an undercurrent of music and people who make and craft things that we really wanted to leverage. So um, Better Block was a great opportunity for us to showcase that, but to also show people what the street would feel like with a little more life on it, with some really nice protected bike lanes, with some extended sidewalk and cafe seating. And um, the Knight Foundation saw that and they funded that as well. But they saw that and they said, OK, this is a place that has momentum. How do we keep that momentum going? So we're one of three neighborhoods, including Middlebury right. and North Hill, who received funding to either start or in our case investigate becoming a community development corporation to keep that moving. That would be awesome to see the uh, the activity that I once recalled as a youth, you recalled as a youth, to be restored in Kenmore. Yes. Uh, what are some things you think will improve the image of Kenmore? So I, right now, we are kind of riding that music train. <laughs> we, um, Kenmore Neighborhood Alliance, um, thanks to the generosity of a gentleman in town named Todd Editor, Edward, he owns four buildings on Kenmore Boulevard and he gave us access to one and said, you know, um, I'm not doing anything with this building right now. I don't have anyone leasing it. Um, why don't we do something fun? See what we can do to kind of reinvent the space. So we had about um, 10, 12 volunteers, a few more um, from the chapel in Kenmore. Um, we went in, we painted it, we gutted the bathrooms, we changed the lighting, we built a stage surround, we set up acoustic shells and we said, if we're music, we're gonna make a live music venue. We're gonna change this bar into something where music is the most preeminent thing here, that artists that live in the neighborhood, that have connections outside the neighborhood, can bring these great artists in, give the community something they can be proud of, but also invite people from outside the community in to see you know, this is a great place and you can get paid doing music in Kenmore. And, and that's important to us. We want to communicate to artists that this is a viable place to do their work. It's uh, exceptional knowing that uh, uh, we have good faith-based uh, roots there. Uh, Jacob Lay, uh, our, f our friend, and uh, yes. working uh, there uh, at the First Glance and, and other uh, faith-based church and uh, organizations are getting active. And you th yeah. think that's going to be a plus? Uh, seeing that infused into the Kenmore community. Absolutely. So first glance, um, they've been on Kenmore Boulevard for about 17 years. In fact, they are in the old Hibernian Club. And right. then next door, my family's former dry cleaners dry and cleaning. laundromat. Road dry cleaning. Yes, they have an indoor skate park, skateboard park, one of the only ones in Northeast Ohio, right there on Kenmore Boulevard. And um, a lot of young people and young families have actually moved into the neighborhood to be part of this ministry. And because they felt so strongly about the children that they were serving, that they wanted to see them in the grocery store. They wanted to be there when something horrible happened to a family member. They, some have been adopted right. into physical families by some of these volunteers. And that's something that makes me passionate about the work we're doing. These are people that deserve good things. They are people just like you and me that deserve to have a restaurant where they can take their family on a Friday night. Um, you know, They deserve to have a place where they can um, play video games and maybe run into some of these kids from first glance. Um, that's so important and the connectivity in Kenmore is so great. I mean, you see the faith-based community come out. You see um, some of the older population come out who do. They remember right. those days and they're passionate about bringing them right. back. But then you also have this undercurrent of business owners and people who maybe haven't been so attached to the movement that are finally, we're all kind of coming front and center to make this thing happen. So that's exciting. Well, I would challenge people in the business community of uh, Northeast Ohio to investigate Kenmore because as I recall, uh, Kenmore Boulevard is a spacious community. Uh, yes. The buildings are uh, being constantly repaired and, and uh, 
down uh, the street uh, in there's different neighborhoods, Shady Side yep. and Island Park, and there are uh, East Avenue, where's the Acme. If you go to the Acme store, uh, you see kind of the history of uh, Kenmore right there in Acme. Uh, one time uh, there was a sparkle market, now that's a drugstore, but as long as you continue to bring new business in, yeah. uh, and you know we need uh, we need the Chamber of Commerce. We need the I know you are involved in Leadership Akron. Yes. And uh, I would challenge and, and, and ask people to consider uh, Kenmore. Uh, the cost and the uh, the uh, help is there right yes. now. The cost factor is good right now. And that's important. That's something that we're really working hard to help people realize is that first of all we have the biggest contiguous business district of any neighborhood in Akron outside of downtown. Right. So you go to Highland Square, they've polished that place up and it's beautiful. But if you look at it, it does not have the continuity of buildings like Kenmore does. And and we see that and we say, you know, this can happen in Akron. You know, we may be different than Highland Square. What we come up with might be a tad different, but it's going to serve the community and it's going to activate all those buildings. We have buildings my gosh, from 13th Street all the way down to 17th Street without a single missing tooth. Maybe two little courtyards um, from buildings that had to come down. And that's something that's important to us. We want to preserve those buildings. They're right up against the sidewalk. It is what you seek out when you go on vacation. You seek the neighborhood that has the walkability and, and the cool cafes and that. And that's really something that um, we believe can happen in Kenmore. And we talk about the global outlook. I've, I've visited cities like Seattle, Tacoma, uh, Phoenix and seen where they've revitalized and yeah. uh, Greater Cleveland's revitalizing. Yes. And it's so important to uh, shift. Uh, we've become less of a manufacturing uh, community in the city of Akron and surrounding communities. Be a lot more university uh, students, hospitals are still mm -hmm. very active, uh, medical mm -hmm. centers. So, uh, and Kenmore is right there at the south side of Akron uh, as people are approaching. Uh, what do you think if you were to uh, continue with the Kenmore Neighborhood Alliance goals, uh, what do you think the next step will be for uh, this coming year, yeah. the future? So we're already working on this right now, but our first step, we need a plan. Um, we can't be doing things scattershot, and it's something that our mayor mentioned. A scattershot approach is not a successful approach. Mm -hmm. There needs to be concentrated uh, resources put into incremental investments. Um, you can't do everything at once, but you can make progress yeah. and concentrated progress. So we are about the blocks between 13th Street and uh, Florida Avenue, 17th Street, 16th Street, um, the main business district. Um, our goal is to, A, keep those buildings in good shape so that we don't lose any of them. It, it's too much part of our identity to lose any of that, but also to get the right businesses in them, businesses that serve the community, that have open doors to the community, and businesses that will uh, serve a lot of the people that we bring in from the outside. We bring a lot of people in, especially to the, um, the music places. Right. And we've got a train and hobby shop, one of the only ones in the community, in Akron, maybe even in Summit County. It's a dying breed. We have a lot of that stuff here. So how do we keep people there in extra hours, what I always say. So Absolutely. we're working on a retail study, a retail market study right now to find out um, where's the money in Kenmore going? Um, what do people want in Kenmore? What will they patronize? And also, uh, what can complement what's already there? So we believe strongly there has to be a plan. It has to be a good approach before we really start throwing money at things. Thank you. Uh, we are listening and watching uh, one of the, uh, I think, one of the finest uh, women working in the city of Akron, Mrs. Tina Broad Boys. And she is here on Forum 360, Fusion PBS TV, Western Reserve Public Media. Uh, she's our guest today. We're also on Hudson Community TV. And you're listening to us on the Rubber City radio stations. And we appreciate it. Thank you again, Tina. Thank you. Uh, we're going to shift a little bit of focus to uh, some recent interviews you've been doing. Uh, you've been talking about, again, the art. Um, Describe some of the things you might see in the art as you drive into Kenmore with some of the grant money that's been uh, given to us by the Knight Foundation for the Kenmore community. What are some of the things that people will see immediately that's different from a few years ago? Yeah, so um, one of the first things you'll see, especially if you um, come off the highway there, the Kenmore leg you mentioned, we're one of the only neighborhoods, and it's a blessing and curse, right? You can get anywhere in Summit <laughs> County in 15 minutes from Kenmore. That's why all of our money's leaving. Right, and <laughs> the freeway of the Kenmore leg. Yes, yes. So um, if you get off that highway there and make your way east on Kenmore Boulevard, you'll see um, on one of our five recording studios, we actually have a mural there. And it was, uh, 
I, I think the owner would agree, one of the, the least nice looking buildings on Cameron Boulevard prior to Better Block. But Better Block really encouraged people to kind of, hey, you're gonna have a lot of people looking at you soon. Like, let's get things cleaned up. And this guy was so great about getting his building painted, but he always had it in the back of his mind, a mural would look really great here. So it just so happened, a, a, an artist was passing through the community um, by way of Honolulu, and he had all the stuff, and we, we caught you know, magic in a bottle and said, hey, you know, can you work on this building for a couple days? And he did. Now we have a beautiful, um, really organic looking tree sculpture on the side of the building that he agrees. Anytime he comes back to Ohio, he's gonna add a few leaves to. So um, yeah, that's one of the first things, but murals are something that we're working on and we'll continue to work on. Uh, this, uh, earlier this year, we had uh, the Mayor Horgan's office uh, uh, gave a State of the City of Akron address and he mentioned Kenmore, he mentioned some of the activities that the city is uh, getting involved in in Kenmore. One of the things I found out was they're providing tax service uh, for people uh, every year for tax season. Okay. They're providing um, community centers, Kenmore Community Center is involved. And uh, I understand also John Valley, the neighborhood uh, development uh, uh, director for Akron has uh, spoken and I did uh, know he attended some meetings in, in your area. What are some of the things that you heard uh, that know that the city is doing as a city and not just uh, the grant money but as a city? Yeah. Well, the thing, one of the things that excited me most is that um, they're creating a new office mm -hmm. in the city of Akron. It's called the Office of Comprehensive development, I think, development or planning, I can't mm -hmm, remember. I think mm -hmm. it's comprehensive development. Okay. And the mayor's chief of staff, James Hardy, will be leading that up. And it will bring together the heads of the planning department, the engineering department, as well as economic development department. So um, all of these different agencies will now be working together with the goal of improving neighborhoods. So there was a time where you'd have planning, create some beautiful streetscape, but engineering have have a different way of approaching it and then streets having a whole different way of approaching it and in in order to get the neighborhood's input and to enact that we need to have some sort of continuity through the departments and i think james hardy is going to be a great addition to making that happen so that was exciting and it, you know at one time uh kenmore was one of the fastest growing cities in the early 20s and then uh, as as it annexed into akron um, we want to get some people moving back into uh, mm -hmm. Kenmore, real estate development and homes. Um, and uh, there's been a consolidation of the schools yes. in that area. It, uh, when you were in school, it was Kenmore High School. And now there are elementary and still junior high uh, schools there. But the shift will be Kenmore Garfield schools, yes. the South Akron community basically getting together. Other uh, communities in the Northeast Ohio have, have consolidated schools mm -hmm. and uh, smaller schools get together with uh, larger schools. How do you think that proceeding is going to, the, the, the moving through, is it going well? Well, there are challenges um, when you combine two groups of people, one of which is larger than the yes. one they're, they're emerging into. Um, you know, there's obvious, you know, bumps you have to work through, but um, in the long run, it is not good for kids to go to a school that is more than half empty, where the school system cannot afford to provide sports right. and, and any of the great vocational programs that we're used to when we grew up. Um, you know, we had a range of, of services at school. Um, these kids deserve that. So, you know, although, you know, it's not optimal, we would love to see our kids stay at a Kenmore High School. The majority, I mean, honestly, the majority of our kids, from what I understand, are choosing open enrollment. Families are choosing to leave the Akron Public School System, either for private school or for Coventry, Norton, Barberton, adjoining school districts. Right. And right. that is that has hit us disproportionately hard right. in the city of Akron. So whatever we can do to give the kids that are attending public schools a reason to be proud, um, give them a great education and help them launch into something that, you know, not just a, you know, college right. career, but something they can do right after school. I think what they're doing with college and career academies will be very good for that. Now the, uh, the school board is working feverishly with the city. Uh, they're also working with the fire and the police. Uh, I know that uh, uh, the police department and the fire department are trying to ensure public safety, Akron police, Akron fire. Sure. Um, do you see a lot of continuing in that area? A lot of uh, continuing support for Kenmore? Sure, so um, dialogue is ongoing. Um, one of our biggest issues right now is, you know, a lot of the business owners on Kenmore Boulevard, um, they close early. 
So, you know, when, when you've got a boulevard that's closed at 7 p.m. and there aren't people on the street after 7 p.m., it, most people think it's a dangerous place, whether it is or not. Right. And, and that's an image that we have to fight somehow um, with more community events, um, maybe helping the businesses stay open certain days a week or month a little later than normal, but get eyes on the street, get people out there, because frankly, we can patrol those streets probably just as well right. as a police officer could. But during those times where there aren't people on the street, just to have some of those community uh, patrol officers walking the boulevard, um, just ensuring that you know this is a safe place to establish your business because you know even when their people aren't here right. you have people watching over you so um, I think that's important for the growth of the neighborhood and Tina boys what do you think the uh, city of Akron needs to do to bring uh, this community development corporation the nonprofit uh, into existence what uh, the block programs what uh, what do you think the next step in that area will be for Kenmore so um, the city is working on a, a comprehensive neighborhood plan for Kenmore uh, we are working currently um, in the middle of a grant application to receive funding to get a, a design agency involved in that to bridge the gap between the neighborhood groups and the the city and what they're doing, the great work they're doing, especially they, they have so much information, so much data. Um, how do we make that work for us? I am not a city planner, I'm not an architect, but if I can get someone involved that's working both with the city and with us to understand our needs, but understand what the city is able to provide, um, that's something that we're working towards, um, towards the middle to end of this year. And using Kenmore Boulevard being the main thoroughfare, uh, the, the Kenmore communities. Uh, always uh, largely active with public parks and festivals. And I know uh, there's going to be ongoing uh, support of the festivals in Kenmore. Yes. Describe some of the things you expect uh, in that area. So yeah, well, the one thing Better Block taught us was if you if you give people a reason to come down to Kenmore Boulevard, they will. So um, we are in talks right now with the Kenmore Community Council about leveraging um, their carnival that they have every year, maybe shifting gears a little bit and making it more for young families, um, children's rides, and and then we can maybe do a Better Block Redux with some great street musicians again, with some outdoor seating, with some bike lanes. We really want to connect people to that towpath, which is an easy way to get bike between downtown and even Star County. Exactly. So how do we get more and more traffic onto the boulevard? Um, these festivals help with that. And it will also help us build a more of a sense of community between the community groups as well. Now, to get an idea of the demographics, there's a, a good, still a large senior community. Yes. And are the seniors working, uh, how are the seniors working uh, with the youth and the up, you know, their grandchildren, their yeah. children, yeah. to make sure they're encouraging them to uh, uh, help rebuild Kenmore the way it was, you know, in my grandparents and your parents' yeah. era. Well, here's what I'm noticing about that population, which is so wonderful. Um, there's a segment that is really excited about change. There's some that think it has to be exactly the way it was, and, and that's difficult because our dynamics and our demographics have changed, but there's also a group that is excited about working with the young people to say, okay, what are the things that you and your family want to see, and how can we bring our resources? I mean, these are retirees who have time, who have institutional knowledge, and some right. of them have money. They, they want to invest in this. Sure. So if we can bring those groups together and share knowledge and that's something we're working really hard on especially with the, the community festivals to kind of 8 to 80 give everyone from age 8 to 80 something to do where they feel like they're part of the community and can convene and hang out in the same spaces I think that's so important to pass along some of the things that you know the carpentry skills the music skills all the things that a blue-collar community like right. Kenmore has all those assets right. how do we keep passing those on keep the unions and the uh, in the industry active, the yeah. uh, labor unions, the industry. Uh, I recall when I was growing up, the Kenmore Board of Trade, I think your family yes. was a part of that, my family was a part of that, were the uh, folks that ran stores, that ran uh, carpenter shops, that ran machine shops, tools, uh, print shops. There was printing, yes. uh, as you indicated, uh, trucking because of the, uh, uh, the salt plant. Yes. Which is uh, Cargill is getting involved in. So all of these possibilities are looming forward and I see so much uh, a renewal and we talk about urban renewal being a, a global outlook situation. Many cities, what's the timetable you're looking at for our local view for Kenmore? How, do you have a, a, a number of years you think it'll take? Uh, what's the Mayor Horgan and, and, and the 
community thinking in terms of time frame? Progress, so if you ask me, I wanna see it right away. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Um, we're already seeing progress. We're already seeing potential businesses talking to our property owners. We're already hearing property owners talking to the city about how to repair their facades and put new signage up. We're already seeing forward movement. I think the community will begin to see that within the six, next six months to a, I would say a year. A year it will be visible to the broader community. Um, probably six months visible to the local community, but um, we we are excited to invite people back and continue to invite people back into our neighborhood through things like our live music now pop-up music venue our festival that we hope to do and our busk until dusk events which will be going on all summer until fall we're gonna have street performers and some food trucks outside on Friday nights get people back down to the boulevard and some famous people <laughs> absolutely musicians and artists uh, we have a uh, less than uh, a minute here so I just want to ask you is there a website or a email or some way that we can reach you people are watching from all over Northeast Ohio that say I'd like to get active in that community I'd like to bring something sure. to that community in Kenmore Ohio we would love that our website is betterkenmore.org and you can reach me via email at betterkenmore at gmail.com thank you Tina boys for being a part of forum 360 thank you I appreciate it have a good day you too forum 360 is brought to you with support from Electric Impulse Communications, Kim and Harvey Nelson, Rubber City Radio Group, Acronist.com, Hudson Cable, Medical Mutual of Ohio, Form 360 Supporters, and the Shaw Jewish Community Center of Akron.